Why was David known as a man after God's own heart? People will respond in different ways. Well, he wrote the Psalms. Uh, he was a shepherd boy. He did this, he did that, he did the other. The Bible tells us why David was a man after God's own heart. It is going to be for commentary and educational purposes that we are looking at this content together. Second Samuel chapters 8 through 11. King David was recognized as a man after God's own heart because he would do all of God's will. When the prophet Samuel was rebuking Saul for not doing the will of God, notice what the prophet Samuel told Saul. You know, the Lord's found someone who's going to do his will. David is referred to in the scriptures as a man after God's own heart. Why? The Bible tells us. Concerning the land of Israel, David took full possession of all of the land that the Lord promised to Abram. Let's take a look at that now. The word refers to David as a man after God's own heart because he would do all of God's will. Now watch this. What was accomplished by King David during his reign? You see right here the river of Egypt. That is one of the things that the Lord mentioned in Genesis chapter 15 as the lower boundary of the promised land. When you read your Bible from chapters 8 through 11 of 2 Samuel, these are the locations that came under David's control. David was not perfect. Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, King David included. But he did do something in particular that was prophetically revealed that he would do, and that was he fulfilled God's promise in terms of the land of Israel. Specifically, David did do all of God's will with respect to the promise that the Lord made to Abram. We have up here a reference to the Euphrates. As you can see right here, this is the Euphrates River. And this is the upper boundary of the promised land as described in Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 15, when we see the Lord's covenant that he made with Abram, whose name was later changed to Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant is basically a land covenant. And the Lord revealed to Abram that the land that he was going to give to him and his descendants a land covenant which is reaffirmed in Psalm 105, verses 7 through 11, with Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, would be comprised of the land from the river of Egypt, which we know as the Nile, all the way up to the river Euphrates. If you do a study on the land that David took possession of during his reign, it was none other than the land from the Nile all the way up to the Euphrates. In that sense, we have very specifically demarcated by borders that the Lord specified and promised to Abram. We have a king of Israel who took possession of all the land that God promised to Abram and reaffirmed to Isaac and Jacob. Now, why is this important? What is so important about this is that it reveals exactly why David was a man after God's own heart. The scriptures say that he would do all of God's will. And with respect to the promise that the Lord made to Abram, that covenant which is known as the Abrahamic covenant, a covenant which is described in Psalm 105 as an everlasting covenant, a covenant which if I have said it before, I'm going to say it again just because people, they need a little help making the connection. It's a land covenant. Okay? It's a land covenant. Now, the land of Israel is back in the news. It is back in the news. Now, King David 
is recognized in the scripture as a man after God's own heart. Because among various reasons, we know for sure that he did all of God's will with respect to taking possession of all of the land of Israel, which kept God's promise to Abram. Now the scriptures say that the Lord puts his word even above his name. Because somebody said that your name is only as good as your word. Think about that for a moment. And if anyone is going to make sure that their name is intact, it is the Lord God. And he made a promise to Abram which has been repeatedly challenged. And the consequences, I think about a White House press correspondent who has documented in a book entitled Eye to Eye, facing the consequences of dividing the land of Israel. William Koenig, a White House press correspondent of, what, some 20 years now, has documented how whenever, I'm going to go ahead and say it, whenever United States presidents have pressured Israel to give up any part of their land in exchange for peace. I see these different posts, you know, right now, I'm seeing this again, people are saying, if you have anything negative to say about this, then unfriend me now. Now, I'm not going to necessarily respond to a post like that because I want to extend a lot of room, a lot of grace, because people are operating out of loyalties and patriotism and so forth and I understand that it's a very powerful love and it's a love I understand but we need to factor in the fear of the Lord we need to factor in what his expressed will is and if repeatedly whenever Israel has been pressured to give up any part of their land or in the case of when the Jews were taken from their homes in Gaza, and Gaza was forsaken, and the Bible prophesies this in Zephaniah, but when Gaza was forsaken and Jews were taken from their homes in Gaza, and Gaza was forsaken, it was given up, and it's referred to historically as the Gaza expulsion, then what happened was, you know, in the case of the Gaza expulsion, it was Hurricane Katrina. And then repeatedly, over and over again, if you read Eye to Eye, William Koenig's book, in which the subtitle is Facing the Consequences of Dividing the Land of Israel, I don't care how you dress it up. I'm not trying to antagonize. I'm just saying the Bible reveals in Joel chapter 3, verse 2, that one of the reasons why God is going to judge the nations, one of the reasons why he's going to gather the nations for judgment is because they did this to my people, they did that to my people, they did this, 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 that, and the other, and they even divided my land. So, I mean, I'm not trying to antagonize. I'm just saying that is the Bible... And what the Lord has to say, thank you, Lee, that's exactly it right there, Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. If the Bible and what the Lord has revealed in his word is for you what it was for King David, then you're somebody after God's own heart. Amen? If that's important to you, if you, if, if you tremble at his word, if it is the start and end point of all discussion, if it is the foundation and the framework then you'll understand that anything that causes or pressures Israel to share, gift, give up, surrender, I don't care how you want to say it, and I don't care who it is that's doing it. You know, the prophet Samuel presented Saul to Israel with the highest hopes. He presented King Saul to Israel with the highest hopes. You might say that he even voted for King Saul. He's a head taller than everyone else. And he says, look, Israel, here's your king. You ask for a king, here he is, head taller than everybody else. <sighs> Vote of confidence from the prophet of God. But things didn't remain that way between Samuel and Saul, because eventually there was a vote of no confidence. Why? Because Saul did not do the will of God. He compromised. He compromised. So the prophet Samuel says, you know what? If you had done the will of God, then your kingdom would have endured, but no, no. The Lord has chosen somebody else 
who will do all his will. Now, King David didn't do everything right. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But one thing that King David did during his reign is he delivered on the Lord's promise to Abram. He delivered on a very important promise that God made to Abram, and that was a land covenant, an everlasting covenant, in which the land that the Lord promised to Abram would have as its borders the Nile to the Euphrates. That, documentably, is at least one reason why King David was a man after God's own heart, because as the scripture says he would do all of God's will. God's will is clearly revealed in the promise that he made to Abram, the Abrahamic covenant. It is so ironic to me that this agreement that is being hailed as historic and it's being couched in such oh, feel-good terms, you know, if it goes in the direction of Israel having to give up any part of its land. While we're hearing so much about peace and security and peace and security, read First Thessalonians chapter 5 because it has some things to say about peace and security in First Thessalonians chapter 5. And it's in First Thessalonians chapter 5 that the Bible is describing or at least referring to the day of the Lord. And it's going to be while certain ones are saying peace and safety, peace and security, but thankfully, before 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 reveals some things that the Bible says in chapter 4, verse 18 in particular. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. <sighs> there are some words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 which should comfort us which should encourage us because sequentially four comes before five and I believe that there's a very significant reason why that which is revealed in first Thessalonians chapter four is described prior to first Thessalonians chapter five but even in first Thessalonians chapter five pay attention to the pronouns because the word of God is referring to on the one hand they and them and then on the other hand but you brethren and they and them but on the other hand but you brethren follow the pronouns and realize that you're not supposed to be among the they and the them you're supposed to experience that which is described regarding but you brethren Okay, I've got a breadcrumb some of this, but I just wanted to mention that with respect to the patterns that have through prior years been so consistent, you need look no further than William Koenig's book, Eye to Eye. But you don't have to read 500 pages to understand what the Lord has to say about the land of Israel. It is his land. And while we can document consequences for whenever we've pressured Israel to give up any part of their land, that's documentable in terms of the consistency of the pattern. But even if we set that aside just for a moment and just look at what the Bible has to say, what the Lord has to say about the land that he promised to Israel, he is very serious about that. That Abrahamic covenant, again, to me it's ironic that this peace plan has been presented as the Abraham Accord. But once again, if the Abraham Accord is prophetically in conflict with the Abrahamic Covenant, then we got a problem. Time will tell. And I think Luke 21 verse 36 says it best. Therefore, watch and pray always so that you may be counted worthy to escape there's some things coming that you want to escape. I'm not talking about escapism, I'm, but I am saying this. If the Lord Jesus himself said to watch and pray always so that you would be counted worthy to escape, then there are some things coming that you should want to escape. And based upon what we see happening in headlines and how themes and current events are resembling themes in Bible prophecy. Things are lining up in such a way that 
you almost have to pay somebody to help you misunderstand it. And there are a lot of people who should know better, who are rationalizing and doing all kinds of mental gymnastics. And it's, it's sometimes it's painful to watch. I mean, we want to give the benefit of the doubt, but sometimes we see these mental gymnastics that are like, you guys remember Yogi Kudu and how he would just bend around and, a little, and fit himself in a little box. I know I'm dating myself because it's a long time ago, but sometimes we see these gymnastics these intellectual, and in some cases intellectually dishonest, gymnastics where people contort their logic in order to fit or maintain a misplaced loyalty. Remember the prophet Samuel, when he presented Saul to Israel, it was with full support. But when Saul went against God's will, things changed. And part of having discernment is recognizing when things change, and sometimes things change in such a way that we have to reevaluate what may now be a misplaced loyalty, because our first loyalty needs to be to God and His Word. And if the direction where things are going starts moving away from God's Word and His will, then there might be a problem there. There are a lot of analogies that have been made from the standpoint of trains. And you know, on railroad tracks, there are these points where if the train tracks are switched by just a little lever, if you know, you switch the tracks, just the tracks will move, but that's all it has to do is just, you know, you pull that lever, and if the tracks move just so much, it's gonna change the course of the train. And we need to understand that if the tracks get switched, we need to stay with God and His Word. Because if things start going in a different direction, then we might have to let some things go. And that's really difficult. That can be very difficult. Because we need to hold on to what the Lord has revealed in His Word about some things which a lot of people are going to rationalize. People who know better, they're going to rationalize it and go through all kinds of mental gymnastics and contortions. And again, sometimes it's painful to watch it because they should know better. But they want so much to hold on to. Yeah, but we've got to recognize, we got to recognize when things change. You know, Israel is now, when they were, i tell you what, Prime Minister Netanyahu won three, I mean, narrow wins now three elections because he promised sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. He promised that there would not be a Palestinian state, right? But now, it's interesting, back uh, just not too long ago, July 23rd, it looked like the Statue of Liberty was getting struck with like seven bolts of lightning. Some people say, oh, it was behind it. Some people say, oh, but you know what? The person that took the photographs or the video, I mean, it looked like it was tagging the base of the Statue of Liberty. It just so happened to be on the same day that Greenblatt, envoy to Israel for the peace plan and so forth, was telling Israel that they needed to set aside, don't, don't make that sovereignty move. Don't make that sovereignty move. You need to set some land aside for a Palestinian state. Uh-oh. So on the same day, July 23rd, isn't it interesting that, at least from the video footage that was presented, it looked like the Statue of Liberty was taking a whooping, I mean a serious whooping, on the same day that a U.S. representative regarding the peace plan was telling Israel, look, 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 don't, don't move on that sovereignty just yet. I know that, you know, you, you had your heart set on that and, and everything, and we told you we were going to be able to do that, but mm, no, no, we need to set aside some land for a Palestinian state. So, as we're observing these things, ask yourself, if you are trying to hold on to something so precious and dear in terms of political loyalties, where the train tracks have shifted, a lever was pulled or pushed, but the tracks moved, and the train is going in a different direction dare I say, perhaps even the wrong direction. That's going to be between you and your Bible and what it has to say. But some of us who are seeing some of these things play out are recognizing how current event headlines 
are resembling themes in Bible prophecy. And to refer back to the train analogy, a train is moving fast. The question now is, which direction is it going? Remember where we started in this video, talking about King David and why he was recognized as being a man after God's own heart. And that is, perhaps among other things, we know for sure that he did all of God's will regarding the land of Israel. Because David, during his reign, took possession of all the land that God promised to Abram and reaffirmed as an everlasting covenant to Isaac and to Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. David delivered on a promise that God made to Abram. Now, when somebody helps you keep a promise, not that God needs any help at all, but when somebody is involved with making good on a promise that you made, where you set your word even above your name, come on now. When somebody makes good on a promise that you made, then that's a person after your own heart. And King David is recognized in the scriptures as a man after God's own heart because he did all of God's will regarding the land of Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates. And some of you, dear ones, please don't overcomplicate this. We are called to watch and pray. Luke 21 verse 36, watch, therefore watch and pray always so that you may be counted worthy to escape these things which are going to come to pass. We see things moving in that direction. We see these things beginning to take place. It's the birth pangs and they are accelerating. Yes, you are seeing what you think you are seeing. For some, watchmen for the Lord in particular, just add this to your list of confirmations because you know sometimes you have to strain to see if there's movement on the horizon but you don't have to strain to see this you don't have to strain to see this it's it's real watch and pray <laughs>